My name is Emma Dorton. And my name is Christian Watkins. And we are Christian teens giving our personal insight with facts and stories. Welcome to the TBH Teens Being Honest podcast. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Teens Being Honest podcast. This week we have an incredible story. Emma's been through a lot this past week, so um, she's going to bring light to it, share her perspective on everything that went down in her life, and yeah, I'll just let her start talking. All right. Uh, yeah, so this week has probably been the most, uh, I mean, out there, whack, life-changing week ever. Yeah, so... A few days ago, I want to say, maybe last Wednesday, um, I get a call. Actually, my my sister gets a call from the coroner's office, um, and she hands the phone over to my mom, and uh, we find out, um, unfortunately, that my dad has died. And when I I heard that, I was like, are you sure? Like, are you sure? And, And I just, I start crying and 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 for a bit I was like why you know why really am I crying this hard and and then it just kind of overcame me how sorrowful I felt and just the regret that filled just my whole self and it was just very hard especially to hear how he died um because I've never known him you know he um my parents got divorced when I was two he left and I'm I've never seen him in in all my 18 years. So, you can imagine my shock. Well, um, apparently they said he was um, homeless, um, uh, sleeping under a doorway, and he overdosed on drugs, and that's how he died, um, completely alone, without family, without faith. And when I heard that, I mean, I just started bawling my eyes out because um because I always wanted to forgive him and I always wanted to I always thought I had time to and I just remember remember like it was so long ago no I I was just crying so hard um and I just was saying to God like please forgive him if there's anything good that I've done if there's any points that I have with you like put it towards him give him mercy um it was just like um it was really hard and I'm talking about it now without any tears because I quite literally cried them all out it was about a five hour ball and I got such a splitting migraine I like fainted from hyperventilating it was it was quite a day um and you know my sisters had come to my house and and my brother everybody knew about it and we were all on our knees praying a rosary for him um just begging for our mom mother Mary to to give him mercy because he made a lot of mistakes and he missed my whole life pretty much like he missed all of my years up to this point so it was it was really hard knowing how he died and feeling that regret of I never got to tell him because he had contacted my eldest sister on her birthday just a couple months ago and was like you know happy birthday hope everyone's doing well and she wanted to to say hey I forgive you and and I'm sorry I held on hatred for all these years about my childhood and and all the mistakes that that you made I'm sorry that I didn't want you to be a part of my kid's life and uh, I found out that day she never sent it and so the amount of regret at the time that he said happy birthday to her she was like hey do you want to say anything to dad and out of my stubbornness I was like no no he's never said anything to me my whole life and now that I'm almost 18, why should he get to know me now? You know, it was a, it was, it was a stubborn response. And I really wish that I didn't say that. Um, so we're crying our eyes out. My older brother, my older sister, um, just, just praying for him and, and asking for mercy. It was like the room was filled with regret. 
I felt it, and if, and if I felt it, my older sister definitely felt it, and we were all on our knees and just bawling our eyes out, and really just, it was a really sad moment, and seeing all of my siblings so distraught just over a dad that really wasn't there for them. So my sister, she texts him, and she just pours her whole out, heart out to him, because she, you know, he's, he's dead, and she's like, I'm so sorry, I, I should have, I should have forgiven you when I had time, and he reads it, and he responds, <laughs> and she's, like, falls to our knees, and she, like, screams, and she's, like, he's alive, and we're, like, what, <laughs> like, no, no way he's alive, and she's, like, he's just responding to my text, she, I'm sure, I'm positive it's him, and I'm just, like, oh, man, so I, like, for almost fall the I like have have to sit down and I'm just like no way I just spent four hours bawling my eyes out of the splitting migraine to just to hear that he's alive and it just felt like the most insane thing to ever hear about and then the fact that he read all of those things that my sister thought she was saying to a dead man my dad is alive and um it turned out to be um my uncle who had passed away and he was using my dad's name and so the coroner got it all mixed up but the, the odd thing was is that the coroner said the fingerprints were an exact match and knowing human beings no fingerprints are an exact match so i was like wow okay um we just got a second chance like what what on earth just happened and my sister calls him on the phone and he's like um he's crying and he's remorseful and he says I'm sorry I'm truly truly sorry for everything and you know says how proud he is of all of us and, and how grown and how beautiful I've become and just how everything that I've ever wanted my dad to say and you know, that he loves me and It was just like the most surreal, what is happening kind of moment. And so he talks to every single one of my siblings, except one of my older sisters. And we are all planning on meeting him for the first time in 20 years, in two weeks from now. So I'll tell you how that goes. I don't know why God does the things that he does, and I definitely don't know his plan, but the fact that it took, unfortunately, my uncle passing away and us thinking he was dead for us to finally forgive and really see light on all of our deep, deep wounds that we've had. I mean, my abandonment issues go so far. Um, into my soul so I was just so willing to forgive and I was begging God to forgive and we all prayed that rosary for him so he would change so that somehow we would get a second chance um, thinking he was dead and now that he's not it's like <laughs> he an God answered quick I think I just want to talk about really second chances and about how precious time is and about how if there's something that you haven't said, someone you haven't forgiven, uh, you haven't told someone that you loved them, there really is no time promised. And let me tell you something, the feeling of regret and guilt is something nobody should feel when somebody passes you don't ever want to feel regret so many of my friends come to me and they're like oh at the end of my life like I don't want to regret anything so I'm just going to do it all now and like I don't want to have regrets more than more often than not everybody has regrets and if there is something that you need to get off your chest this is your sign uh, this is like 
a crazy intervention from God to to heal from something, to forgive somebody because there is no time like now. And tomorrow, I know it sounds cheesy, is really, really not promised. Imagine if today is your literal last day on earth. Like, you have no more time left. You would notice how sweet life is. You would notice your family. You would notice the warm temperature and how comfortable your blankets are. You would notice a smile and laughter because it's your last day. So knowing that my dad could have died and I couldn't forgive him in time was a feeling like no other that I really don't want anybody to ever feel. Uh Yeah, everybody has stuff in their life. Everybody has pain and things that they have to heal from. But don't regret wasting your time and don't regret holding on Don't miss your opportunity to forgive. Because if he actually died, that would have been it, you know? God has completely transformed my life in a solid six months. I am not the person that I was last December that's sitting here right now. Not at all. I mean, I was so lost, so broken, so sad. I didn't even, I I was so headstrong and driven and focused on, I need to be rich. I need to get into a good college. I need to be the best out of my entire family. I need everyone to be proud of me. Now, no, that doesn't matter to me. I don't care about being any of those things. I don't care. Yeah, I still struggle with things. The This world is has its temptations and its pressures, but I genuinely just want God and it's not that I want to force this down anybody's throat and it's so hard to understand so having an open mind is really key here but if you only knew how amazing and joyful and loving God is you wouldn't dare want to be cut off from that I mean I think Mother Mary is my mom now like what (laughs) Like, I think that Jesus can truly do all things. And I think that life is worth living. And that fathers are worth forgiving. And things that I never really thought I would be able to do and be able to say, I'm saying it now. Because time is the one thing we can't get back. We also can't get back an opportunity once it's missed. So, take it, you know? Take your opportunities and don't let them pass you up. Not when it comes to this. Not when it comes to forgiving. Not when it comes to loving somebody that you should have loved. That should have loved you. And it's not the way it was supposed to be. My dad leaving and not being there wasn't the way that God intended it to be. Um, It was really hard, though, growing up without a dad. Um, I have the strongest, most amazing, most wonderful mother. Uh, I I can't believe God blessed me with such an amazing mom. But I would think about not having a dad probably every day, every other day. At least a few times a week, I would. Um, Little things, like um, I'd be watching TV and there'd be a, a dad dancing with his daughter, like in Footloose. Or, um, I'd be walking or driving alongside a park and there would be a dad playing with his daughter. Um, or all my uncles with their kids or my grandfather with my mom. I really, I really felt like I wasn't worth knowing and I wasn't good enough and I really thought that she didn't even know my name I was just not a thing and I just really always felt like I just wasn't meant to have one ever it was really hard because I wanted one my whole life and 
when you're eight years old, reaching out to your dad, begging your mom to please let you talk to him, and you say, Daddy, if you love me, you'll stay, to which he replies, I'll see you when you're 18. Yeah, you don't expect your first heartbreak to be by your dad. You expect it to maybe be by some adolescent teenage boy that doesn't even know what love is, but no. It was, it was for my dad. And it's hard. It's incredibly hard to forgive. But it is also amazingly beautiful and utterly worth it. And I learned that God, that Jesus is my my one and only father, really. Because it's that it's that love that, that never passes. That It's that love that can't go away with death, with disappointment, with anger. It's that love, that overwhelming, all, like, enticing, just love that transforms somebody from being completely broken to completely loving in four months. It's that kind of love that strengthens a soul and makes it shine and I don't want to waste any time holding on to hatred or anger when I know I can choose to love and forgive people so yeah my dad coming back was a complete shock and honestly I'm emotionally drained and completely exhausted but I feel at peace and I feel trusting towards God for the first time in my life, I feel like completely trusting. And, and it's with something as big as my dad, which still sounds odd to say, coming into my life. I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know what his actions are. I can't control other people's actions. The ball is in his court now um, and whatever happens next happens but the thing is is that I'm so at peace knowing that God loves me it doesn't matter if nobody else in this world does <laughs> man I've really changed <laughs> I just cared only about everybody else and nothing about God and now it's just like the complete opposite it took a long time and it still takes every single day to to, to be that way but it's so Oh, amazing <laughs> and I'm just making a fool out of myself now but honestly it's like don't waste time guys because there might not be any more time left to have so with all that being said um I do forgive him and let's see what's gonna happen see what God has in store right amen Wow. I don't know what to say. <laughs> You're so awkward. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I'm better actually talking. I can't I can't be okay, fake so, about anything. Okay, just a few sentences. So yeah, it was it was actually really hard this week. And my you know my dad abandoned me, so <laughs> the end him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is my partner. Can we please have these in the bloopers? <laughs> what? All right, Emma. Let's start with a prayer. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't. Let's... So Christian, um, let's try the whole thing again. I'll do it. I, 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 I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it. All right, everybody, everybody, shut up. But thank her first. Say thank you. That was incredible. Thank you. That was incredible. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, I know, but I, I, I you were talking, so. Oh. Thank you. That was incredible. And very. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, I look dead. <laughs> okay. Oh my god! I'm... Oh, wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> now we re we switch results. I looked. I looked. I was like. Thank you, Emma. <laughs>
Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just take your giggle? Oh my gosh. Oh, please stop. Please, please, please. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> okay. Can we please? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Oh, please stop. Why are you laughing? What's wrong with my laugh? <laughs> What's wrong with my laugh? Oh, okay. You're going to have to put these in some sort of blooper, blooper reel. Stop looking at me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have to, Christian, you have to hurry, please. I'm trying. You have to look Just at me. Just say the outro. Just say thank you, Emma, for that. Thank you, Emma. For <laughs> time oh i'm so sorry every time i try to suppress the giggles it just thank you emma for sharing i feel like you're just oh i'm so sorry <clears throat> okay uh, thank you emma for sharing everything that went down during this week <laughs> Show them that like this is this Thank is what you. happens Thank when you, you trust in God. <laughs> Let's do this. We're doing good work here, guys. Oh my gosh! I feel like you just take so long to like. Look. Thank you. <laughs> he just he just like I stares at me for like five seconds too long, and I'm just like, please, I know, I know. You're just please say what you need I'm to trying say. To, I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> But I'm seeing you, I'm seeing you go like, thank you, Emma, for that. <laughs> thank you for that beautiful story. And now. <laughs> I, I hate this. No, I hate this. That was good. I we can't be serious. <laughs> do, do you see me stop breathing? <laughs> You ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Oh, oh. <clears throat> <laughs> I just, I stopped breathing. Because I know I'm going to laugh and so I just need to breathe through it. Okay. Thank you for sharing your wonderful story. Now let's, uh... <laughs> are you looking at me? <laughs> you told me to look at you! You, you told me to look at you! Like... <laughs> Thank you for that, man. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you for sharing your wonderful story. I'm sorry you had to go through all that. Um, so now let's give a prayer to anyone that's feeling guilt or remorse or unable to forgive, no matter how big or small. You want to wrap us up with a prayer? Oh, uh, sure. <clears throat> uh, Lord, I just want to say uh, to please come into the hearts of, of those watching, those listening, um, people all around the world that need to forgive, that, that take time for granted, and that really just need a reminder of your mercy and of your joy. Lord, please give them grace and give them peace and open up their hearts so that they can do the beautiful thing of forgiving and moving on and living their life happy, blissfully, genuinely, amazingly happy. Um, Lord, thank you for everything that you do in all of your mysterious ways. I trust in your plan. 
and I love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this week's episode. We hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Like and subscribe. Comment and watch it.